Behold, now I heard it that time. <laughs> Behold, I am here to announce that something new has been birthed into the world. Something long awaited, something we have never seen before. Something with power, with light, and with the potential to change the world forever. That something, of course, is nuclear fusion. Wait for it. Less than two weeks ago, on Tuesday, December 13th, scientists at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in San Francisco announced that they have, for the first time, achieved net energy gain in a controlled fusion experiment. Now, perhaps you heard about this in the news. It was all over the news. You may have even heard commentators speculate about the potential of fusion power to completely replace fossil fuels and even to solve the climate crisis. And other commentators, of course, are urging patience. This is a big deal, yes, but it might also take a few decades to make it practical. Perhaps you didn't have time to gain a real understanding into the science behind fusion. And by time, I mean four or more years of graduate study in physics. Obviously, I didn't have that kind of time either. So it's all thanks to Wikipedia when I say that fusion power is the act of combining atoms to yield new energy. Now, you may already be familiar with fission power, which splits atoms apart. This has already been in use for many decades in nuclear power plants, nuclear submarines, and regrettably, in nuclear weapons. Now, in a fission reaction, atoms are divided, and a huge amount of energy results. More than a million times as much energy as the next greatest power source. Unfortunately, though, it has a radioactive byproduct. Nuclear waste, also known as toxic waste which somebody has to dispose of. Now just remember those guys next time you start to think you're working in a toxic workplace. Fusion creates four times as much energy as fission. What's more, it doesn't have a radioactive byproduct. Fission is much easier to achieve, but it's messy. Fusion is harder, but it's cleaner, safer, and vastly more powerful. Now, you might be starting to wonder if you've walked into the wrong lecture hall. No, this is not Nuclear Physics 501, and it's not a climate conference. And if it were, I would be in the wrong place. Yes, I am here to announce good news, but a different kind of good news. So what does fusion and fission have to do with it? The reality is pretty clear. All around us, we see people choosing fission over fusion. People are dividing and conquering, picking one side and demonizing the other. And there's a lot of power to be gained from polarization. But it's only attractive if you've never seen the true power of connection, of collaboration, of reconciliation. For proof of this kind of power, we have our first reading in our psalm to look to. In fact, they speak so univocally that together they give us double proof, almost as if Isaiah and the Psalms had themselves become fused, at least for one Sunday. 
See for yourself. You have it right there in front of you. Both make multiple references to singing for joy, shouting for joy, lifting up our voice. Although Psalm 98 does add some instrumentation to that. Both are exuberant testimonies of the Lord's work, announcing peace, victory, righteousness, etc. Then they both add an interesting detail. That the Lord has done this with a right hand and a holy arm. Now, how often do we talk about God's arm? The hand of God, sure. But the arm of God? And yet here it is in both Isaiah and Psalm 98, God's holy arm. That's nice, but, but why? Has the Lord done this? First, we see to comfort the people of God, to show mercy and faithfulness to Israel, to Jerusalem, to Zion. Both, again, are in agreement on that point. But that's just the beginning, but because they quickly pivot their language from particular to universal, from local to global. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of God. And the Lord's righteousness is openly shown in the sight of the nations, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. So shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. And how? Has the Lord done this? Besides with a holy arm. And that's where the gospel of John steps in. And tells us exactly what God has done to bring peace and victory to all nations. John explains that, quote, the word became flesh and lived among us. In other words... God came down and fused with the world. In fact, God was already fused with the world. But this, this was the proof. Emmanuel, God with us. And we have seen his glory. Not that glory that we imagine high above us like the glorious northern lights or the glorious constellations. Glory, or the Hebrew word kavod, means weightiness. Glory doesn't float upwards, it presses downwards. Make no mistake, God had every right to split from us, to separate. But God did the opposite. At our worst, God didn't split. God moved in closer and fused with us, God's children. God became Jesus, fully human and fully God. Two natures fused into one for our sake. Now hopefully, this reality bears on us every day of our lives. But just in case it doesn't, we have this one day of the year to make sure we don't forget. Something new has been birthed into the world. Something long awaited. Something we have never seen before. Something with power, with light, and with the potential to change the world forever. Something that has, in fact, changed the world, healed the world, and will continue to do so until its healing is complete. It is a once in eternity event. Nothing like it ever happened before or since, and it will never happen again, and yet. And yet. My favorite words to preach, and yet. 
we are called to do the same. You and I, every day. As we look at our broken world, our broken relationships, our broken selves, Let us be more like God and more like Christ. Let us lean in, move closer, and fuse together. And whatever that means, whatever it means to make a new connection, or whether it means to listen better or to work together, even if it means to repent and make things right, to heal the hurting, to return the stolen, to pay the damages. Whatever power we've received from dividing, we may learn yet that the power of uniting is vastly greater. And it does not weigh us down with all that toxic waste that comes with division or polarization but leaves us clean, leaves us open to receiving more. It leaves us free to behold the glory, the weightiness of the word made flesh, full of grace and truth for all the world to see. Merry Christmas.